This video is only one part of an in-depth review, so check out the rest at thegoodride.com. Thanks for watching. Welcome to The Good Ride. I'm James Beastie. I'm married with children, but deeply committed to an open relationship with snowboard gear. This is the Arbor Clovis. I rode this with Burton Kendo, Union Atlas, and the Arbor Cypress. I got this in a wide variety of conditions, everything from some weird midwinter snow all the way through spring, hoping to get kind of a good powder day, but got kind of like a wet, thick, sunny powder day with this. To give you a short summary, this Clovis is a unique board because it looks really tapered, really directional, but in comparison to the board to the left to it, the single, or in comparison to the Arbor Annex, or a lot of other tapered directional free ride boards, it just doesn't feel the same. It feels a lot more like a double ender, a board with the same width in the tip and tail, and it just has a very kind of unique, aggressive mountain freestyle feel, like stuffed into a tapered directional shape. So for those of you who want that tapered directional look, but want more of a centered feel on board and more of a double ender feel, this could work for you. So let's talk sizing. This 157 felt perfect for me. It felt like just the right size. Didn't want to go up or down. Felt like it could handle my 195 pounds to 190 pounds really well. It felt like it was working well for my boot size. So everything kind of matched up. And I think Arbor does a pretty good job at handling us bigger guys because they've got a little more flex to it. Now about flex, you can see it's got kind of a medium stiff feel between the feet, going to a little softer flex in the nose, add this stiffer flex in the tail here, and overall it's very medium stiff. You can see the twist in here, it's got a decent twist to it, but it kind of matches the longitudinal flex. So what this does on snow is the nose feels a little easier to butter than the tail, but both took a decent amount of work, not a lot though, and it was better than I thought than it would be from flexing it here, you know, under the pretty lights. It, when it comes to ollies, what I found though, is these lifted sides, these lifted contact points on the, in the nose and tail can sometimes screw with you if you like to load your ollie off your edge. What I found with these boards is they're better to flat base and load your ollie and then they perform well. But if you try to load your Ollie on the edge, you'll sometimes engage that uprise fender technology, that lifted area, and it'll wash out and it'll feel weird. It'll catch you off guard a little bit. But overall, if you flat base, it's gonna be fun. Now, when it comes to the shape, this is tapered directional. There's a decent amount of taper, kind of like, the, like your standard traditional US style free ride board kind of taper. But the way the stance is set up, more centered on board than it looks. It feels very centered on side cut and you don't really feel like you're riding that much of a directional board that you see here. When it comes to the camber profile, you basically have full camber from tip to tail, kind of old school full camber, except each area kind of in the, at the end of the effective edge in the nose and tail, there is this lifted area that just kind of lifts up here and then kind of goes back right before the nose begins. And what that does is it makes it tremendously less catchy. And an intermediate could ride this no problem and not catch an edge at all. It's definitely, you would think this is gonna be a stiff, aggressive camber board and it's not. It's just as forgiving as hybrid camber, hybrid rocker, and all those other shapes. So that's a really cool positive. The only problem is, is that you don't get extra float in powder. We'll talk about that later, but it's got a very forgiving feel. One thing though is it's not consistent throughout all conditions. In soft snow, you're gonna love this. It feels really good. In hard snow, it can feel a little sketchy and it takes a little while to get used to. What happens is those lifted sides make your board feel edgeless and washy at first. 
So when you go to turn in really hard snow, it just feels like you have no edge there. What you have to do is really commit harder than you would think and get the grip tech in the, like over your feet to engage. You gotta press that camber down and lean over and then it engages those edges. So it can feel sketchy there for an intermediate, but you can skid your turns really easy with this board when you get off your game. Now, when it comes to speed, this is pretty good speed. I mean, it's not a free ride bomber. If you want speed, you want the Annex or even to step it up from there, you want the Crosscut or the A-Frame. But if you want good, aggressive, all mountain to mountain freestyle kind of speed, this is gonna be more than competent there. And it's not very chattery. When it comes to base glide, I thought this was good, but not amazing, kind of, you know, upper middle. And then when it comes to uneven terrain, I felt like this was a very good all day resort ride. It's a little on the damper, stiffer side of things, but it doesn't get cranky in any condition that I tried. I didn't feel ever it passing like a lot of chatter up under, up into your joints. I felt like it was doing a pretty good job there at being damp and kind of aggressive, but not being like overly cranky either. So, you know, not the best, but definitely not the worst. You could ride this all day. Now, when it comes to edge hold, this grip tech over the bindings is really cool. I love the way this feels, but again, you have to kind of learn how to ride it in hard icy snow. It can feel really weird and it's really hard to commit to that edge and get past that edgeless washy feel in hard snow. But in soft snow, I was surprised at how little the grip tech grabbed and I thought it did a good job. So if you're willing to spend the time to get used to this in hard to icy snow, it will grip well. It just takes, a, a, there's a learning curve to it. Now, when it comes to turn initiation, the Clovis has a very balanced side cut and pretty medium quick turn initiation. It felt like it wasn't twitchy or hooky and but whenever you needed it, it was there and it would take you where you wanted to go. I felt that in all conditions. And then when it comes to the overall turning experience and carving, you've got a lot of camber here. You've got good spring out of the turn. It's a very between the feet kind of carve, but you do need to be a little careful of making that, you know, the tail not wash. So it does need a little more back foot weight on a harder carve. But overall, it's a very unique between the feet kind of style ride. And I found like the side cut was pretty balanced. It liked a little bit more of a longer drawn out S turn, kind of like you would make as you're approaching a natural feature on the mountain to get air. It really shined with that, but it was also fine with across the groomer carves and turned really well. It could even do a circle carve okay. Nothing amazing there. It's not a circle carver, but it was pretty balanced overall, kind of leaning maybe a little bit more towards the long drawn out turning kind of style. Now, when it comes to powder, you can set this back a decent amount and you can get some decent directional float, but it's really surprising. It doesn't feel like a lot of tapered directional free ride boards in its peer group. It definitely feels more centered on board, even set all the way back. I felt like I was kind of leaning back more to get that tail to engage and it wasn't as floaty as I expected. But what will be cool for this is if you ride more steep terrain and you're looking for a board that feels more centered between the feet and that's where this board will shine. It's not a real amazing low angle powder board, like the kind of boards that I ride at Mount Bachelor. Now, when it comes to switch, very doable. Could be a fun board for hitting kickers in the park, maybe even riding half pipe, but really not a jib board. And overall, I think this is, again, a kind of a unique board that fits a certain type of riding style. If you're looking for directional setback and kind of more on that, turny, surfy side, this board isn't for you. If you want something that looks tapered and directional, but feels a little bit more like a mountain freestyle twin, it's like tapered mountain freestyle, then this might work for you and be really fun. All our reviews are a best effort, objective opinion from an average writer's perspective. There's no brand oversight. We're free to say whatever we want. 
We send back everything unless it's a favorite, then we ask to keep those or straight up buy them. Now, if you need advice, fill out the MeHarmony profile in the contact us section of the site. It's the only way I can help you properly. If you want to support us and if what we reviewed appeals to you, it helps if you buy through our links. So thanks for watching.